Hey guys, so this is 1.3 population structure in theme one of population and settlement. Now this links up very much with uh, previous units. And you know, the idea is this is gonna help you. So if you go back to unit one, for example, of this section, so 1.1, you're gonna see that it matches up pretty well and helps to explain things in theme three as well, got to do with development. So understanding development, this is crew K 2018, year on top with male, female side. Uh, we've So we've got different genders, blue and red might come up as different colors or whatnot for you in the exam the age group is categorized into different ages there is zero to four for example being the first one and it goes all the way up to 100 and then it's just 100 plus because often the population isn't that big after that point right so we can see anyone from 15 to 64 are going to be economically active uh, anyone below that would be considered young dependents. And then above 65 would be considered elderly dependents. Now that idea of dependents we've mentioned before. So that's just uh, people we don't expect to be working and to be able to support themselves, but also they won't be able to contribute into the country as a whole economically. Now, obviously this could be really different. Like if someone goes on to study to become like a doctor, for instance, after high school, they're probably not going to be working in a hospital until they're about 25, right? So not everyone above there is expected to be economically active. You have people with any reasons why they can't work with disabilities, or you just have low unemployment and slow industrial growth in the country. So we have to just kind of think of this as broad categories, but there's lots of exceptions in there. So you've got to be able to kind of or describe what you see then you've got to be able to maybe explain why you're seeing these things and then you've got to be able to think about well what's actually happening in the country right now is this a good thing or a bad thing and then we should be able to link it back to the demographic transition model from unit one okay so this one here we see the base is narrowing uh, compared to the economically active but it's slightly widening towards uh, as it goes down in age, uh, the male and female side are quite even. Now that is, those descriptions are okay, but let's see if we can get like a better description here. So the economically active population makes up a vast majority and fluctuates slightly. So we're talking about those little areas here where it goes in and out and in and out. Um, and then to add to that description, if you're ever using population pyramids and just overall any sort of graphs and, and, and numbers that are given, you're, it's good to use them. So say the largest groups are between 25 and 34 and 45 and, and 54. So that's really great. I've now used the age categories and I've showed the examiner that I'm able to actually look at those statistics and uh, use them. So that's really dependence make up a large portion of the population. It gradually narrows towards the top. So we're just describing the shape there. Here we see a notable difference between male and females. For example, males have 1 million and females have 1.3 million in the 75 to 79 age range. So now I've used all three. I've used the male, female side, direct comparison. I've described the shape generally, what's happening, what is the trend as it's uh, going up. And now I've mentioned a specific age range and I've even calculated the population in millions just to do a comparative. So the last point here is really a strong point in terms of a description. The first point is the weakest point, right? So we want to make sure we're adding in as much detail as obviously you may or may not be really familiar with the UK. Uh, you may or may not have lots of actual statistics and knowledge about it. And if you don't, that's fine. The idea is we're just gonna see roughly what's going on there, right? It's not like guaranteed this is the main reason. So this indicates it's an MEDC, a more economically developed country, or a HIC, a high income country here. So it is quite uniform between zero and 14, with slight increase from 10 to 14, indicating stable birth rates. And going back to chapter one, you'll see that stabilized birth rates is a good indication you're in stage four of the demographic transition model, which likely means you are a more economically developed country. It means we have a very strong workforce, loads of economic uh, development. Their uh, low, dependent, low dependency ratio, sorry. Um, so the ratio between the people working compared to the elderly and the young dependents there. So if there's loads of dependents and not too many people working, uh, that's a really bad sign. It fluctuates, but it does narrow. It means that life expectancy is high. Medical care and food security are high. Same again. So a healthy kind of population overall, if you're going to have so many people, like say to the 50 to 54 category there, that's fantastic. So it does look like quite a healthy country overall. Elderly dependent population, 
we would say that this is actually quite large. Uh, there's a long life expectancy and it slowly narrows. So it means death through natural causes, really, right? There's not like a sudden massive dip sort of in there around the 70s. There is, but we'll discuss those type of things later. Going back to the demographic transition model. Hey, as always, if that was useful, like, subscribe, and I'll be able to post more videos then. But also, if you want the rest of the content, follow the links below and you should find what you're looking for. All right. Good luck, guys.